Hey guys, welcome back. So in our very first episode of our Techno Babble Upgrade uh, project for 2021, the first thing that I wanted to do before looking at every other aspect of production that I want to upgrade is the electricals. Now, if you want to take a look at that first video, I'll put a link to that in the video description below. But yes, I wanted to focus on my electricals first. And by that, I mean the electrical sockets and all that all around my house. Now, the reason for that is, you know, I review all sorts of, you know, tech and electronics and all that, uh, TV, soundbars, monitors and all that and a lot of times i don't have enough plugs or enough sockets wherever i'm testing them so i had to buy like a ton of different power trays and, and they're mostly fine but they're very inflexible you know if i buy a power tray if it's not enough i need to buy a whole new power tray so yeah i just wanted to do something uh, to upgrade it and i came across line 8. so in my first video i talked about line 8 what they do, there'll be their power rails, what services are available, what features they can they can give you, uh, even things like the color design, the build quality, all absolutely fantastic. Now a special shout out to Line 8. Uh, thank you guys so much for helping to sponsor and setting up everything for me. Uh, but I just want to say again, like in the first video, that even though Line 8 is sponsoring this video, uh, it's still sort of a review in the sense that I'm still looking at the setup, using it for a few weeks now, uh, and my thoughts and observations are still my own. So yeah, I've got Line 8 rails installed all over my home now. I've got one where my TV console is. I've got one where my wife's work from home setup is. I've got one in the kitchen. I've got one in the bedroom. And I've got two right here in my studio. Now very quickly going again to what Line 8 is or what their rails are. So you have an entire rail uh, where you can put this sort of thing. So these are adapters with your 3-pin plug. Now you have like this one which is an international plug or you can have uh, one that is specifically for Singapore or which is also compatible with the UK. Now of course there's a lot more to the rails than just putting this kind of plug. There are a lot of features. So what I've done is with each rail in the different parts of my home, I've added certain features so that we can go through them and see what they do. But yeah, so let's go through um, all the different rails in my home. So the first one is the one at my TV console. So now before I had the rail, I had two separate power trays right underneath my TV console uh, for two reasons. I mean, I needed a lot of plugs to cover all sorts of devices there. And sometimes when I review a new product, I need more space to add in uh, more sockets. So another thing was those power trays, uh, some of the, the plugs were too big and they would cover uh, one of the other sockets. So some of them would be blocked and I couldn't use them. So I had to use the second one. So for this reel, I went with the black hairline anodized color. Uh, fantastic, sort of like a brush metal, but in black. Now the reel for this, I didn't hide it. And honestly, it looked so good that I wanted it to be part of the entire aesthetic of my TV console. And also because I chose black because, well, my TV is black, my TV console is black, so it's sort of fit the scheme. Now the length of that rail is about 1.1 meters. And you might be wondering why it's so specific. Well, like I said in my previous video, you can customize it in Singapore. You can customize it to the very millimeter. So in this particular case, they measured it according to my TV console. So they are both around the same length. Now in terms of features for that specific rail, obviously you've got the rail and I have like, I think like seven or six of these and I still have space to put more. But apart from the rail, I also have two LAN pods on the right hand side. Now what that is for is actually those LAN pods run all the way to my bedroom and my studio. Now for the TV console rail, I also have a very special USB module. So it has both a USB type A and a type C. Now this is not your normal USB, all right? So first of all, this has 60 watts of charging, all right? So both the type A and the type C. So I can charge uh, my phone, I can charge laptops. Now a lot of laptops usually require, if they can charge by type C, usually it's about 65 watts. Now at 60 watts, you definitely still can charge. It's just a little bit slower than 65. But with my phone, uh, the Samsung Note 10 Plus, I can charge it at super fast charging from the wall without the charger. And lastly on the rail, it has a smart home module, right? So you see on the left hand side, it has a silver button. So that's a master switch for all the plugs. Now, not just that, it also has a smart home module. So I can connect uh, my phone to it. So using the EWE link, all right, I can use that. I can switch off the rail on and off. And it also supports Google Assistant, which is fantastic in my home. Now you might wonder why does the USB module and the, the smart home module take up so much space. Now we'll talk about that later, uh, but it really doesn't have to be. All right, and the next one is my wife's work from home setup. Now actually that one, that particular rail serves two purposes. One, it's for 
my wife's uh, work from home setup. But not just that, I also have a Google Home right at the top, along with some other stuff. Right now it's just a Google Home, but I'm gonna add some other stuff. So to serve those two purposes, one at the bottom, one at the top, uh, we actually decided to do an entire reel from the bottom all the way to the top. Now the reason for that is for my wife's work from home setup, uh, she has two monitors, she's got her laptop, there's a docking station, uh, there's also a printer and the desk. Now you might be wondering why on earth does a desk need a plug? Now that's not just any desk, that is the OmniDesk Pro and yes, that was sent to me by OmniDesk and we are testing that out now. But we're going to do a full review of that, right? So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss that review. Now we originally intended to plug everything on the rail, but what we decided to do was, so OmniDesk actually provides a power tray that we can fix under the table. So we've plugged everything there and it's just a single plug on the rail. Now the reason for that is because we realized that if we needed to move that table somewhere else, we would need to go to the rail and unplug everything one by one. But if we use the power tray provided by OmniDesk under the table and just a single plug to the rail, it's a lot easier to unplug and move it around. However, if that changes and we do need to plug in multiple things, the rail is there. That's an absolute fantastic feature and makes everything so much more flexible. So for that particular rail, we chose ivory white leather. Uh, the reason for that is actually white, but once you put it up on the wall and with our sort of warm lights in the living room, it sort of matches uh, the entire aesthetic perfectly. And for the length of the rail, that is a whopping 1.69 meters, all right? But you know what? That's not the longest. Which brings us to our kitchen. So the kitchen one is highly customized as well. Uh, and that one is slightly longer than my wife's uh, rail at her work from home setup. So the work from home setup one was 1.69. This one is 1.79. And again, highly customized. Now in terms of design, we went with the silver hairline uh, anodized one. Uh, because it sort of matched the kitchen because we've got like a metal uh, wall as well. Um, but yeah, if you look at it in the center, you actually don't have a rail, it's totally covered. Now the reason for that is because there is a stove there, right? So I don't want uh, that part to get damaged, you know, with the uh, oil and steam and that kind of thing. So what we've done is we've covered that and only on the left and the right hand side, we've got the rails. Now just to clarify, these rails do have some level of water and dust resistance, but I think to be safe and the fact that I don't think I'm going to be putting anything there to plug anyway, we just left it on the left and the right. And now for the bedroom, and I have to say, this one actually might be my favorite. Now it's similar in, in a sense that most of it is actually blank, like the kitchen where the center is blank, there's no rail. Uh, but for this one, it goes to a whopping 2.907 meters, all right? Again, right down to the millimeter it's customized, right? So most of it is actually covered. Uh, because it's going to be blocked by my bed anyway. But on this rail, on the left, you have your rail, you have, again, the smart home button as well, the whole smart home module, and you also have that same USB module with power delivery and quick charge. And on the right hand side, we have another quick charge USB Type-A and Type-C, but not just that, we also have the LAN port that again, runs all the way to the TV console. And that one, for design, we went with American Spruce because again, it just fits the aesthetic of our room perfectly. Uh, and not just that, like when everything was set up, when we push the bed back, we put all the furniture back, it looked absolutely beautiful. It almost has that same sort of like hotel vibe. All right, and lastly, our studio. So like I mentioned, our studio, we have two different rails, all right? So the first one is the one that is directly under this PC table. So before I had one power tray that was sort of hung under the table, uh, it's an Ikea table, by the way. Uh, and it was good in the sense that it was very good to cable manage. It was hung there, uh, out of sight. But the problem with that was it was very inflexible. But now with the rail, I have so much room, all right? It's basically almost the entire length of my table. But yeah, I have the option to add as many of this as I want that can fit on that rail. Uh, I've also got that USB quick charge module both on the left and on the right. I have the smart home module there on the left as well. And again, I've got the LAN port on the right-hand side that runs to the TV console where my router is. Now for this one, we went with Brazilian rosewood because I felt that that one uh, sort of matched my table design the most. And in terms of length, again, very customized, 1.51 meters. All right, and lastly, the second one in the studio is actually a portable, sort of like a power tray. All right, so it has a very long cable running to the back of the wall. And here I have about five or six plugs on that rail itself. So this one comes in, it's quite short. It's only about 600 centimeters. And I need that for this studio lights, for my camera, for my microphone, uh, for other things as well that I plug in. If I do an unboxing for a laptop, I need somewhere to plug it in. So this has been excellent. And again, with design, I went with Brazilian rosewood again because, well, it's in this room and the other one is Brazilian rosewood. So I thought, why not? So yep, that's all six of the different rails in my home, all right? 
uh, and just to talk about the entire process of installation so they came in they finished everything in about four to five hours which was a lot quicker than i expected they were extremely professional some of the measuring tools they use i've never seen before they had a, a laser leveler uh, to help get it straight they were very particular about that now one thing did happen while doing the installation i actually realized that i forgot a few details uh, to line 8 that i wanted installed in some of the rails now first off i forgot to tell them and this is my fault i forgot to tell them that i wanted a smart home module in the tv console rail uh, and they didn't install it obviously because they didn't know but the great thing about this and like i said it's so customizable that when i told them about it i apologize say i totally forgot they said look no worries they will just come they will customize the rail so they shortened the rail and they just added the smart home module all right now earlier on i did say that the uh, USB module didn't have to be that big. Now, the reason why it's that big on that is because I told them later on that I wanted to add it in. So I told them there's no need to replace that module. Uh, just add the smart home in and shorten the rail. But if you look at the one in my bedroom, all right, so the button and the USB model are very close to each other. And not just that. So in the bedroom, the original orientation was you have the rail and then you have the USB module just next to the bed. So what I did was I actually asked them to switch it around. So instead of having uh, you know, the USB port right next to me and then the rail, I told him to switch it around. So now the USB port is further from me and then the rail is right next to the bed. Now you might be wondering, is it that safe to have a rail right next to your face while you're sleeping? Now I already checked in line A and they say that all of these are shielded so you don't have to worry. One thing you might realize looking at, you know, the rail and the TV console and the rail under my PC, you might realize that, oh my God, there's so many cables all over the place, it's quite messy. Now it doesn't have to be. Now it's actually really easy to cable manage. I can add trunking, I can cable tie and it can look a lot Lot nicer than it does but the reason i'm not is because i'm constantly reviewing tvs sound bars i even have the ps5 that i'm testing out you know and i will constantly have to unplug plug pack unpack there really is no point same for the pc as well i'm always reviewing tvs uh, or monitors you know so there really is no point cable managing everything so even though i don't have any faults i can't think of anything that i really didn't like about the rails there are some features that i think would be nice if like it added in the future now first thing and i'm not sure whether this is possible but i think it would be quite cool if you could add like the light switches to your room on the rail itself take my bedroom for example now it's got a beautiful rail it kind of gives you that whole uh, vibe that is from a hotel um, but yeah, you've got quite a bit of space there as well. I can shorten the rail and maybe add some switches that actually control the light in my room. So it'll be a lot easier. I can just lie down. I can press the switch to switch an, uh, off and on the light. I don't have to get up and switch it on. Plus, if you think about it, if you have the switch on the rail, automatically that makes the light in your room also smart. And speaking of light, that brings it to my second suggestion. All right, again, I don't know if it's possible, but you know, you have all these adapters that you can put in. Now, these only do one thing, it is a plug. But for me, I think it would be really cool if they had an adapter like this that didn't have a plug, but actually came with sort of like a very thin gooseneck uh, light that serves as like a night light or a, a light for reading. So that would be pretty cool as well because then you would have a night light or something really dim that you can use for reading when the lights are off. You can move it around to fit where you are perfectly. If, if they added a night light feature for this, it would be fantastic. And now my last one. Uh, which also has to do with the adapter. Now, you saw the USB modules on the rails, all right? So the reason why it takes up that much space is because the power delivery and the quick charge module actually is pretty much the size of that module. However, if it didn't have uh, a specific quick charge or power delivery feature, I'm sure you can get it a lot smaller. So I think for people who doesn't need quick charge or doesn't need a whopping 60 watts uh, of power to charge, you could actually have like maybe four, I think, four, maybe even more USB ports here that has, you know, your regular 2M or 5M charging. That would be really good as well because if you've got multiple things to plug in, if let's say I've got friends over and they all want to charge their phone, doesn't need to quick charge quickly, I can just take this out, plug it into my TV console and automatically I've got four extra USB ports. But yeah, so those are just some suggestions that I, I, I have. I'm not sure if this is going to be possible at all. But now we're going to come to the price and this is a bit of a tricky one, right? So some of you might be looking at everything and saying that, oh, this might not be cheap. And well, you're right. So the entire setup, now in terms of price, I can't give you a definite amount because like I said, it's so customizable. There's so much that you can do with it. It can be really small. It can be really long. And like at any home, if they were to customize one for you, the price is going to be really, really different. So to give you sort of an estimate. So in my home, like I said, I've got six different rails and of six different lengths. Some are really long, some not as long. Uh, but with all the other features, smart home features, all the USB ports with the LAN ports, you know, and with the smart home features again, everything comes out 
to about four and a half thousand Singapore dollars. Now, of course, that includes the installation charges and all that. And yes, some of you might be saying like, whoa, that's a lot of money. And well, yes, it is. But then again, you, you gotta understand that the point of this Line 8 Rails is not really meant to be a budget option. It's not something that you buy if you want to save money. What you are getting is something that is built from scratch entirely in Singapore, all right? Fantastic build quality, excellent design. You know, like I mentioned, all the different color options. It was so easy to match it to my room and my kitchen and my living room. It was so easy. And then of course you get that extreme customizability. The customizability for me really, I think is his biggest feature. Of course, the main thing is the rail, but the fact that you have so many options that I mentioned it in the first video, um, you know, from the LAN pods to the USB cables, to the smart home, you've got HDMI, you've got composite cables, you've got all sorts of other things, optical cables as well that you can put. There's really like almost no end to what you can have on your rail. So yeah, to summarize, I couldn't be happier with the Line 8 rails. They have been absolutely fantastic. I love it. My wife loves it as well. Uh, it's been the talk of all my friends when they come over and look at the rails. They're all really, really impressed. Now for our next upgrade project, all right, just to give you a little hint, it has something to do with my editing workstation right at the back here, all right? So if you want to check that out, do remember to subscribe so you don't miss that episode. But that would be all for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm JP and I'll see you real soon.